Hey, how's it going? James here with Major OSC. Uh, this is a production tutorial, uh, kind of an overall tutorial. Uh, I've had a lot of people email me uh, asking me how I produce stuff, how I did, um, how I get stuff to sound the way it sounds. Um, and I've been at it for 10 years and I figured it's time to start telling a few folks how I do things. Um, the things I picked up um, were mostly early on when I was um, a progressive house slash tech house, deep house, big room techno producer. Uh, I was on Beatport for a few releases, then I kind of faded away and then I, I've been just kind of interspersed, you know, intermittently doing a release here and there with um, plus plus remixes mostly. Um, but this is a big opportunity here, um, part of the Patreon account that I have. Uh, two bucks a month gives you unlimited um, production tutorials. I'm going to be doing like one or two each week. It's a good way to, um, you know, um, getting other guys who want the instruction and are hungry for info, and give give you a chance to get up to speed and, and really accelerate your your production prowess. Uh, I know I did when I was on deployment in the Navy from uh, 2008. Well, I did two deployments, one in 08 and one in 2010. Um, I brought as many magazines and uh, digital magazines and real ones as I could. In fact, um, I'll probably edit this video, so I'm gonna post up a picture of me reading future music or something like that while I'm on, while I'm on watch. <laughs> uh, that is not required attire, that hat, that helmet I found in the, in the storage locker. But um, yeah, the, um, the, the experience of, of being out to sea with unlimited amounts of uh, free time, I mean, just tons of free time. There, there, there was, you stood watch, you did a normal work day, but then you'd have all this extra free time. So I just read and read and read, and I read a lot, read a lot of articles, and I also went online and went on Gear Sluts, and there was stuff posted, and I would type in stuff like, I would just ask Google questions, and occasionally it would pull up an answer. A limiter on their master and that's kind of the first thing I wanted to show you um, and the reason why is because it gives you a better sense of what your final mix is going to sound like when it's mastered when it's smushed by the mastering limiter and the, all the stuff you put it through so I run it anywhere between negative five and negative seven um, and then I produce and I, I do a mix down using that turned on now I'll turn it off occasionally from time to time to check and you'll start to understand the characteristics of how what a limiter sounds like when it's being overloaded versus when it's not loaded enough or when you could stand to increase certain things but l1 ultra maximizer is pretty damn forgiving and that's a good thing um i actually haven't done this yet but let's do a test i'm going to play a little section of this track here and we're going to see how um it sounds without the limiter so in theory um and don't pay no attention to this this is just recording um the audio um, but in theory, when we turn this off, it shouldn't be clipping more than just a teeny tiny bit. Let's try it. Yeah, over here. We're looking good. Oh, just a little bit there, here and there. That's no biggie. And then you want to check the intense sections, I'm sure. Yeah, that's not that's not too bad for for dropping in a new section, having it not you know just a tiny flash of red. Um, that's pretty acceptable. So, and L1 will handle that with with ease. Um, so then you know you got yourself halfway decent dynamics, halfway decent um, um, levels for everything. And yeah, when you turn it back on, it's, it's so much louder. <laughs> I'm sorry for anybody who's listening to this at high volumes. But yeah, that's been a big help. Um, so basically, the, and that's part of a bigger concept, which I also read about, Brids and Dead Mouse did this also, or do this, is they mix it down and they, and they sculpt as they go. So rather than doing an entire arrangement and then going back and doing a mix down, um, which is, by the way, still a good idea if you have a really slow computer. <laughs> so then you can just work with audio, you know, freeze all the stuff that aside we're not talking about that version though we're not talking about that method this is the this is the this is the computer intensive version but it's also really really uh helpful is that you sculpt as you go so that means you're adding eq and compression to each layer uh as you work and what this does is get you a much more accurate uh general idea of what the um final master is going to sound like 
the idea is that if you cue every individual track exactly how you want it to sound, you shouldn't really have to put much of an EQ on the master. In fact, I think it was Dead Mouse that made a joke that on one of the his most successful tracks from like 2007 or 2008, it consisted of an L1 uh, of an L1 or an L2 ultra maximizer and a linear phase EQ, a waves linear phase EQ. That was it, and that that was all. I mean, he has much more in depth stuff now, but he's worth millions, so he can afford to do that. And he and he's also probably learned a shit ton of new stuff. But you know, he has a much more complicated mastering chain. But the point is that to make a successful, very loud, punchy great sounding mix doesn't require a whole lot um you don't have to have a big giant mastering um chain to get good so- stuff sounding good and and when you realize that that you can really get your mix sounding am- amazingly clear without all that extra help then um yeah you're just gonna be, be- you're gonna be better off you'll, you'll realize that um everything can be kind of done as you go and that's the whole that's the whole point of all this so rather than showing each individual thing, uh, let, me, let me just close some of this up here. I'll show you how I work. Okay, so let me talk about the HydroSynth here. HydroSynth's a hardware synth, but what I did here applies to any other, any synthesizer, any hardware or software synth. Um, what I did is I had a, a sequence, and let me double check the though. Okay, it's there. This is called Popcorn Chicken. It's from Ignition 2. And it sounds like this. So when you hear this, when you hear it going wow, 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 that's aftertouch. That's me pushing down on the keys while I'm holding them down. And that was me moving the mod wheel forward and backwards. It increases the sync a little bit, so it kind of has this kind of sound to it, like an elephant or somebody's voice cracking. Anyways, so what I did is I played that a, a bunch, right? And I recorded rhythmic stuff with it, you know, just, and I moved the knobs. And, I, and then I played it back once the MIDI notes were all in perfect sync. And they really didn't have to be for this since it was a sequence. But, uh, and then I turned it into audio, right? So you'll hear stuff like this. And of course, it's EQ'd. It's got some other stuff going on, a little side chain, a little ducking, a little sculpting. So I just grabbed what I liked. And and then I what I, I grabbed the little nuances, the little blips and blaps and the whomp and all that stuff. And I arranged it in, in a way that I liked. And so it became its own sequence just out of the clips. then I actually went and made a second layer. So, okay, so here's what I added. Um, I just turned it into a percussion loop, essentially. I took, I think, one of the, the tail end of one of the sequence uh, sequences. I think it's still Popcorn Chicken, but it might have been something else. Um, and I, I looped it up, and it looked more like this, right? And then um, I just condensed it into an entire one. And it's its own track, so it's got its own LFO, you know, or rather LFO tool doing the ducking. I think that's what what it was, is was a bounce in place with a, with a delay effect, and then I just deleted the original. Um, so later on, it really helps solidify, it really helps enhance the groove. Um, and uh, and just just adds that much just that much more of a pocket. So I'll play it for you without that extra layer. It's still got a pretty good groove, but and then it really kicks in. So I'll show you the difference. Oh. Oops. Try right here. Okay, and here's with the new here's with the new layer. Thank you. 
really it's the texture up top. The I'll bet you we could put a high pass filter on this and be just fine, even more so. Let's see if it still sounds like the sounds groovy when we do that. Okay, so a little bit it still has a little bit of that, but I'm going to leave it as is. I, I like it. it's got that. It's actually playing a, a fifth, um, as you can tell. The bass note is C, um, and uh, that that percussive element is playing in a fifth. So more like this. Yeah, see what I mean? Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's how I work with um, with sequences to get them uh, like a rhythm bed. I really like rhythm beds. I will occasionally I'll use a loop. Sometimes I'll use a loop that with full of rhythm that actually triggers a pad, like a, gener a general pad. I'll play it on the hydro synth or any other synth, and then you'll hear, and then I'll side chain it uh, with some effect so that rhythm kind of punches through. Sometimes it's a ring modulator, something to that extent. Um, okay, so there's enough of that. Let me show you the bass. Okay, the bass is two layers. My trusty D VST Dune here. This is my one of my all-time favorite soft synths ever. Um, this is really what, what punched through. This is where, this is what started all for me as a sound designer. And it's because of this mod matrix. When, as soon as I looked at this, I was, everything started to make sense to me. Um, you know, I'd known what an ADSR was and an LFO and all the, I knew all the terminology and I knew what each thing did and I knew how to edit presets. Um, this is like years ago, it, but it, it, it never really dawned on me that I could so easily create something exactly what I wanted. And so when I realized that I never used a preset again, well, not usually unless I really liked it. In this case, this is, this is from scratch called Daryl Bass. Um, I won't even tell you about the origins of this, but, um, it's it's pretty generic. It's got some stereo feel to it, as you can tell. It's got a spread turned up. Um, it's just a lot of presence. Good filter, a lot of low end. Um, it's just a great, cheap go-to VST, and it sounds awesome. It sounds as good as a virus. That's that's kind of what the intention of was when they made this. And if you get a Dune three, you're going to be flooded with crazy amounts of sequences and presets that it'll probably never use, but. That's why I liked Dune is it was just a little bit more simpler, a little bit less, a little bit less of an auto, <laughs> a little bit less of an auto VST. Like Dune 3 almost plays itself. I always joke about that. But. All right, and then the other layer is Serum. I did um, a free VST, or a free, I did a free preset pack for Serum, and this is one of those presets. It's actually a sequence. I just drowned it out with... <laughs> Sustain. All right. So I, I thought it added some really cool texture. Here's what they sound like together. Oops, that part, it is alone. And then I kick it back in, forgot. Oopsies, sorry. You know, yeah. So adding a second bass, as long as you had EQ the bottom end um, out like this, right? Get it, get it out of there. Um, can really, it, it can really add a lot. It can add a lot of texture and add. Otherwise, it's just a little bit of a little bit boring. It would be great if it was a little bit less layers, but because of how many layers, I'd really like the extra texture it adds. <laughs> So those three in harmony was a little bit of a risky move, um, or those three kind of working together was a risky move because you had a p potential here to really have a lot of low-end mud, but I don't think it uh, particularly sounds bad at all. Yeah, here. Oopsies, where's the other?
that's the uh, the last the baseline that kind of the last section of the last uh, portion of the song, and then it then does this. And that's obviously the outro, and it's hinting at another track coming in in the key of G instead of in the key of C. Perfect fifth, right? And so I just repeated it every measure, and then you know that's how you build something else. So that covers bass. When you get a remix and you don't really know how to work with it, <laughs> when there's really not a lot to work with, you gotta you gotta get clever and creative. So let me play you quick this little clip of the um pad one of the pads and then i'll play you a clip of the micro freak and then here is um bird bass is pretty much useless I mean, the guy didn't give much to work with. Oh, well, I used that one pretty much directly. Oops. Added reverb, delay, Sonic's Oxford inflator. But yeah, here's, the, here's another layer. I didn't really change much aside from EQing and I added the LFO tool for everything in 16th notes to keep that and filter sweeps. I did manual filter sweeps with this ladder right here. Add a little bit of, you know, atmosphere. And then here and there, uh, there was one of these. Um, I thought that was pretty useless, so I made it into this. How did I do that? I did two things, two LFO tools. One of them is 16th notes. One of them is just ducking. Du, du, you know, this is stock. This is how it shows for the most part when you load up LFO tools. Quarter note, duck, sidechain essentially. So it's simulating a sidechain compressor. And then so the 16th notes, what I did is I hit record with no other tracks armed, no tracks armed or enabled to record. I just recorded automation. So when I heard it playing, I moved the mouse up and down as, as I wanted and it would make this kind of stuttering, this stuttering uh, staccato and open uh, effect and here's what I mean so useful I cannot tell you how many things I use the LFO tool for but that's one of them one of the coolest ones to do I do it again right here same again here and I believe I was doing it with this pad too. This is pad is really tricky because I was trying to get it to sync it, or not sync, but I wanted to get it to fit and right into the mix, not too loud, not too quiet and, and just get us a, a very subtle filter sweep. So let's see if, what you think here. Want it to be gradual so it's kind of an ear oops so it's kind of an eerie entrance almost there let's try again say that that feels just about right it's really subtle you probably can't even hear the difference but you don't want it to be too loud you don't want it to be too soft 
for this part, I was actually thinking of adding an extra symbol going tss, 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 or adding in something like this. <laughs> I'm going to automate some um, sends here. Watch this. Uh. And we're done. Now we have some extra reverb. Let's try the long reverb instead, shall we? I'll control, oops, control C. All right, let's go and do long reverb instead. Ah, there we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a nice eerie break. Here we go. There's a mini break. Save, 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 save. Oh, no. Oh, audio engine crashed. Good. We can still save it. Well, that's probably a good place to stop. Um... Just wanted to point out one awesome thing about Bitwig is that if something crashes, particularly the audio engine, it is separate from your arrangement. So you will not lose eh, progress. If you like what you see and you want to learn more about what I'm doing, um, go ahead and head over to Patreon. The link is in the description. Um, two bucks a month is the kind of producer's uh, tutorial um, rate. Um, I, you know, this is just to make ends meet. Uh, my unemployment got cut about two months ago for technical bullshit reasons. So I'm basically going to be without unemployment, uh, for three, for another month at least. And of course it's all being back paid, but I got to make rent payment and, you know, support the family somehow. So, you know, majorosc.com, um, it has patches and, um, patch banks for sale for hardware synths, some free patches for uh, soft synths. And, um, of course, you know, this Patreon project's my way of, uh, kind of giving back to the community. The way I figure it is, is if I'm going to be going down, uh, if, if the ship is going down and this this venture is not going to work out, um, then I might as well have spent my last couple of months helping others, reaching out, making a difference, kind of, um, you know, being worthwhile, making the most of what I have to offer instead of just trying to sell you guys presets. So um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give feedback. Be Please give feedback. Um, you know, I'm I've done plenty of tutorials, but I'm still new to this whole kind of regular tutorial thing. So um, we're going to get in the groove of things, and I'm sure some of these will be a little bit more smooth and a little bit less babbly. So, yeah, until next time, take care, guys. Bye -bye.